Hello everyone and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan and today's video is going to be specific to the novel that I read for Misery May. This was the group read and that is Jude the Obscure. I feel like it deserves its own video. In Thomas Hardy's novel Jude the Obscure, we follow Jude Folly first as an orphan boy and then as a young man. Jude longs to be a scholar and eventually Jude longs to be loved. Jude is naive to a fault, but his motives are pure. It's the mid to late 1800s. We're in England in and around a city called Christminster, which is a fictional city, but it is based on the very real Oxford and Oxford University. So sort of this center of learning. As an orphan living in rural England, Jude teaches himself Greek and Latin, and he longs to be a scholar at Christminster. That is until he meets a woman. So Jude's about 19 years old, I think, and he meets Arabella. And it is as if this is the first time he's even noticed a female. Not to be too specific, but some stuff is gonna happen. And eventually we're gonna move along and Jude is going to finally meet his first cousin, Sue. Sue Bridehead. Sue's last name is filled with irony because Sue is not your typical 19th century Victorian female who is willing to live under the rules and regulations that the church at the time and the Victorian framework allows. Not, and not to be too specific again, but a whole lot more stuff is gonna happen. And it's Thomas Hardy, so you know it's, it's gonna be a little rough. And this book is about learning and the love of learning and having a scholarly life. This book is about sex. And if you're a certain character, it's about not having sex. This book is about marriage. Perhaps most of all, this book is about marriage, although arguments could be made against that. And not only marriage, but the constraints that marriage, the marriage contract, which is so interwoven with the religious beliefs and morality system, and, and the constraints that puts on individuals and especially on women during this time period. So Thomas Hardy was born in 1840. He died in 1928. So his life spans several literary eras, but he wrote his novels during the Victorian period. So he is a Victorian novelist. This came out in 1895. It was Hardy's last novel because the scandals that came from this, from critics and readers alike, was enough to convert Hardy to becoming a full-time poet for the rest of his life. This is my second Hardy novel that I've read. I read Tess, Tess last October, and I think Tess is a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece, Tess of the Durbervilles. For me, Jude the Obscure kind of slides in lesser than Tess, but still magnificent. Something that has crossed my mind reading Jude the Obscure, that book reviewers, including me, if I haven't said it out loud, I've certainly thought it, that I'll be reading a new release. So a contemporary of our time novel that is historical fiction. And there'll be a strong feminist perspective in that. And I've heard reviewers, or even thought it myself, that it just wasn't realistic for the woman of X time period to have such a strong feminist perspective, one that felt very modern, very current. Well, friends, meet Sue Bridehead. 
Some of you will hate her. I absolutely loved her. But this is a Victorian novel written in Victorian times by a Victorian author and we get Sue Brighthead. And then as for Jude, well, I am a sucker for a nice guy. So I really enjoyed Jude. Are you gonna find Jude and Sue and pretty much every other character in this book infuriating at times? Yes, yes you will. You need to be patient with them. But I was, I was in this book. I was completely immersed in in Jude's story and Sue's story and in this world that Hardy created. So for me, any frustration was well worth it. Now, who's gonna like this book? If you enjoy Victorian literature, yes, it's a must, just read it. If you enjoy sad books, now, it is not sad in the same way that Tess of the D'Urbervilles is. In Tess of the D'Urbervilles, Hardy just like wallops us time and time again. It's, we barely recovered and he gives us another tragedy in Tess's life, right? That's not how Jude the Obscure is. Jude is a slow burn until it's not. If you have already read Jude the Obscure, please leave me a comment below if you loved it, if you hated it, if you were indifferent, let me know. Or if you're interested in reading Jude, I would love to hear that too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye.